Have you ever stopped to ponder why we celebrate December 25th as the birth date of Jesus Christ? An intriguing question, isn't it? This day, etched into calendars worldwide, is universally accepted as the birth date of arguably the most influential figure in human history, Jesus Christ. But have you ever stopped to wonder why? Why this particular day? And how did it come to be? Let's delve a little deeper into this intriguing question. The 25th of December, a day celebrated with joy and merriment across the globe, became the official celebration of Christ's birth many centuries ago. It's a day steeped in tradition, a day when people of all walks of life come together to celebrate peace, love and unity. But the origin of this date as the birth of Christ is not as straightforward as you might think. The traditional belief that Jesus was born on December 25th is not explicitly stated in the Bible. In fact, the Bible doesn't specify a date for Christ's birth at all. The selection of December 25th is a product of historical, cultural and perhaps even political influences that shaped the early Christian church. The decision to celebrate Christ's birth on December 25th was made by the early Christian church around the 4th century. This selection may have been influenced by the Roman celebration of Saturnalia, a week-long period of lawlessness celebrated between December 17th and 25th. The Church could have chosen this date to encourage the conversion of pagans to Christianity by aligning the celebration of Christ's birth with existing pagan festivals. So the question remains, was Jesus really born on December 25th? The answer is not as clear-cut as we might like. However, what is clear is that the date has come to symbolize much more than the literal birth of Christ. It's a symbol of hope, love and unity celebrated by millions around the world. But today we are going to challenge this long-held belief. Meet Samuel F. Robinson and Jim Stanley, two scholars who beg to differ. Samuel F. Robinson, a renowned historian with a special interest in early Christian history, and Jim Stanley, a theologian known for his audacious interpretations of biblical narratives, both share a rather unconventional belief. They hold the stance that Jesus, the central figure of Christianity, was not born on the 25th of December, a date widely accepted and celebrated as Christmas around the world. Samuel F. Robinson, a respected scholar, has spent the better part of his career delving into the complexities of early Christian history. With his extensive knowledge and keen understanding, Robinson questions the established belief of Jesus' birth date. His arguments, rooted in historical evidence and context, challenge the conventional notions we've held for centuries. On the other hand, we have Jim Stanley, a theologian who is not afraid to challenge the status quo. Stanley's interpretations of biblical narratives often spark debates, and his stance on Jesus' birth date is no exception. He presents theological arguments, citing scripture and historical interpretations, to support his belief that Jesus was not born on December 25th. Together, Robinson and Stanley have created quite a stir in both academic and religious circles. Their arguments, backed by years of research, propose a shift from traditional beliefs, inviting us to question and reconsider our understanding of one of the most significant events in Christian history. As we explore their perspectives, it is essential to remember that the pursuit of knowledge often requires us to question what we've accepted as truth. Robinson and Stanley present compelling arguments, but let us delve deeper into their reasoning. Robinson and Stanley's argument stems from their meticulous research and interpretation of historical and biblical texts. Their collective wisdom and deep analysis question the widely accepted date of December 25th as the birth of Jesus. Firstly, let's delve into their biblical interpretation. Robinson and Stanley argue that the Bible doesn't specify a date for Jesus' birth. They point out that the Gospels of Matthew and Luke, which recount the Nativity, make no mention of December 25th. Instead, they draw attention to details such as the shepherds who were out in the fields at the time of Jesus' birth, suggesting this would have been unlikely in the cold of December. Next, their examination of historical records adds another layer to their argument. They highlight that early Christians didn't celebrate birthdays, viewing them as a pagan tradition. In fact, it wasn't until the 4th century that Pope Julius I declared December 25th as the official celebration date for Jesus' birth. 
They argue this was more a strategic move to Christianize the popular pagan festival of Saturnalia, rather than a date based on factual evidence. Furthermore, they delve into other evidence that challenges the December 25th date. For instance, they discuss the historical record of a Roman census mentioned in the Gospel of Luke. They argue that such a census, which required people to return to their hometowns, would not have been scheduled in winter when travel would be difficult. Robinson and Stanley also explore the symbolism of December 25th in the ancient world. This date was significant in various pagan religions, often marking the winter solstice and the rebirth of the sun. They suggest that the early church might have appropriated this symbolic date to ease the transition for pagans converting to Christianity. In essence, Robinson and Stanley's argument is a blend of biblical interpretation, historical investigation, and cultural context. They invite us to question the established narrative and consider the possibility that the date of Jesus' birth might not be as concrete as we've been led to believe. Their arguments are certainly thought-provoking, but how do they stand against the traditional belief? As with any debate, there are counter-arguments to Robinson and Stanley's views. Firstly, many would point to the traditional interpretation of the Bible. The Gospel of Luke, for example, narrates the story of shepherds tending their flocks at night when they learn of Jesus' birth. Some argue that this suggests a spring or summer birth, when shepherds would be more likely to keep their flocks outside overnight. However, others contend that December's mild weather in certain regions of Israel could also allow for this scenario. Secondly, the history of the December 25th date itself offers a counterpoint. This date was officially recognized by the Western Christian Church in the 4th century, partly to coincide with the Roman festival of Saturnalia and the winter solstice. This strategic decision was made to encourage the spread of Christianity by aligning it with existing pagan celebrations. This doesn't necessarily negate the possibility of Jesus' actual birth occurring on this day, but rather suggests a convergence of spiritual and cultural practices. Thirdly, the widespread acceptance of December 25th worldwide is another counter-argument. Traditions and beliefs like languages evolve over time, they are shaped by a complex mix of historical, cultural and religious influences. Even if December 25th might not be the precise birthday of Jesus, it has been embraced by billions of people over centuries as a symbolic date to celebrate the birth of Christ. This collective acceptance carries weight and meaning in itself. Lastly, there's the argument of significance over accuracy. Some might argue that the precise date of Jesus' birth is less important than the teachings and impact of his life. The focus on December 25th, they might say, is less about historical accuracy and more about the celebration of love, peace, and goodwill that Jesus' birth represents. So, where does this leave us in the debate of December 25th? The debate between the traditional belief and the views of Robinson and Stanley is far from settled. As we've journeyed through this discussion, we've taken a fresh look at the commonly held belief that Jesus was born on December 25th, challenging it with the insights of Samuel F. Robinson and Jim Stanley. Their arguments, while compelling, have sparked counter-arguments that keep the dialogue alive. This debate goes beyond a mere date on a calendar. It's a reflection on the very fabric of our understanding of history and tradition. It's about how we interpret the past, how we carry forward traditions and how we balance the known with the unknown. The question of December 25th is a symbol of the greater ongoing quest for truth and understanding within us all. Whether we agree with Robinson and Stanley or not, questioning our beliefs allows us to gain a deeper understanding of our history and traditions. Exodus 34, 14 Do not worship any other god, for the Lord whose name is Jealous is a jealous god. Exodus 23, 24 a do not bow down before their gods or worship them or follow their practices. This is a question for you. Write in the comments. What do you believe is being hidden from us that is so important that it required changing the date to mimic the pagans?